Hi everyone, Mary here. We're going to do an example problem of a deer that is on a road and a vehicle is attempting to stop. Now, I actually live in the uh, backwoods of Wisconsin. And living in the backwoods of Wisconsin, um, deer on the road happen, and they happen all over the place. So here's my situation. I have a deer with a heck of a rack. Doesn't he have a big rack here? Um, and there we'll give him a little eye and a little cute ear. There we go. Um, a driver is traveling along a straight stretch of dark country road, traveling at 55 miles per hour. A deer steps out in front of the driver, 50 meters in front of the car. When the brakes are applied, the car can decelerate at 7.0 meters per second squared. If the reaction time of the driver is 0.15 seconds, how much distance is required to stop the car? And will the car hit Bambi over here? So let's write down what we know. I've got a car that is originally traveling at 55 miles per hour. The deer steps out in front of the driver 50 meters from the vehicle until you get to the deer. And the car can decelerate at a rate of 7.00 meters per second squared. So that happens to be my rate of deceleration. I'm going to make that a negative 7 meters per second squared because that is a deceleration. If the reaction time of the driver is 0.15, seconds. Okay, so two things are going on here, and I'm going to change my pen. Here's what's going on. There is time for the driver to react. This is the time it takes neurological impulses to go from his eyeball to the driver's brain and back to the foot that says, oh good gravy, there is a deer, and that actually takes time. For most human beings, human reaction time is going to be between about 0.1 up to about 0.25 seconds. Um, if you have not had a lot, a lot of sleep or caffeine, that might be a little bigger. And if you're going to have a reaction time much faster than 0.10 seconds, odds are you are an amazing athlete and you are in training at this point in time. So this is still pretty speedy, but during that 0.15 seconds, has the driver's vehicle's velocity changed? No. So in this section, the car is actually going to go at a constant velocity. The velocity is going to be steady for this section of the journey. Then at the end of that section, then the car is going to go from its original velocity down to a final velocity of zero, and it's going to stop. And the question is, in the entire journey, is it going to happen in less than 50 meters? If the car stops in less than 50 meters, Bambi's going to scamper off into the woods. And if not, you get venison in the freezer. So here goes nothing. First thing I want to do is calculate the displacement that is covered during the time the driver is reacting. Well, during that time that the driver is reacting, that's going to be a constant velocity. And if you recall from our list of kinematics equations, if you have a constant velocity, you only have one choice of equations. Velocity is displacement over time. I want to solve for displacement x. So x is going to be velocity times time. Now the velocity I want to use is the 55, and the time I want to use is the 0.15 seconds. And I've got seconds, and I've got miles per hour. Well, that's not going to work. So before I can actually use this equation, I'm going to have to convert. So if I have 55 miles per hour, I've got to get rid of miles per hour and go into MKS units. There's 1609 meters in a mile. And get rid of hours, go to seconds. There's 3,600 seconds in an hour. So I'm going to pick up my calculator. 55 times 1609 divided by 3600. And I've got, rounding off to three significant digits, 24.6 meters per second. Now I can take this information, put it in here, and find the distance traveled during the reaction time of the driver. So that is going to be 24.6 meters per second is the velocity. The time is 0.15 seconds. 
seconds are on the top, seconds are on the bottom, they're going to cancel. I'll end up with meters, and when I multiply that times 0.15, I end up with 3.69 meters. Not all big distance, but as you can imagine, the distance covered is going to be bigger if someone has had a couple beers in them and the reaction time gets slower. That's definitely going to have an effect. So that's the distance covered in this first section, and I'm going to write that down so I don't lose it. Here it's going to be 3.69 meters. Now, for the second part of the problem, this is going to be during the deceleration or stopping. So while the car decelerates, the original velocity is going to be the original 55, which we found to be 24.6 meters per second. The car is going to come to a stop, so final velocity is zero, and we were told that this vehicle can decelerate at a rate of negative seven meters per second squared. And I'm solving for x. All right, hit pause, take a look at these. Can you choose the right equation to use? All right, are you back? Which equation did you choose? I'm going to pick vf squared equals VO squared plus 2AX, and this is the equation that has just those three variables in it and nothing else. I'm going to solve for X. So to do that, I am going to do a smidge of algebra. To get X alone, first thing I've got to do is get this VO from this side to the other side. How do you undo an addition? You undo it with a subtraction. So I'm going to subtract negative VO squared from both sides. V final squared minus V original squared is going to equal 2AX. Now I want to get X alone. To get X alone, I'm going to divide both sides by 2A. And if you do something on one side of equation, you have to do the same thing on the other side to keep the equality. These two are going to cancel and I'm going to end up with an equation that says x is v final squared minus original squared divided by 2a. Now I put my numbers in. Final velocity is 0, so final velocity is 0, minus original velocity 24.6 meters per second quantity squared, and for this problem this negative sign is outside the square. So when you square the number, you do not eliminate that negative. Two times the rate of deceleration, minus seven meters per second squared. So I'm gonna pick up my calculator and let's see what I get. 24.6 squared divided by 14, and I end up with a displacement of 43 point, whoops, I wrote that funny, 43.2 meters. Now, a couple things I want to point out before we continue. First off, um, this negative sign, and then 2 times a negative 7 is going to be a negative 14. The negative in the top and the negative in the bottom are going to cancel, and what that means is my final displacement is a positive number. So this final displacement is a positive because those two negatives cancel. Next thing is, let's take a look at these crazy units. I've got meters squared per second squared, because these units get squared because of that squared right here, divided by meters per second squared. Divide by a fraction, invert and multiply, meters squared over second squared times second squared over meters. Second squared cancels. There are two of those that cancels one of those. Hot diggity dog, we end up with meters. We wanted meters, we got meters, and that's a good indicator. I probably did my algebra right. So I've got 43.2 meters is how far the vehicle travels while attempting to stop. So let's go back up here. 43.2 meters. And the question is, what is the total distance required to stop the car. So 43.2 plus 3.69, and I get a total distance of a total x that's going to be equal to 46.9 meters. Bambi the deer is 50 meters away, so 
fabulous. He's going to jump off into the woods. You don't have to go to the body shop and get your car work done. And uh, he lives to terrorize drivers for another day. All right. We will see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.